All right, so we have a little issue there with uh, John Huddy's audio. We'll try to get back to that. But, of course, uh, big promises made by President Biden for green energy as it relates to Indonesia. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that, and hopefully we'll get back to John's report in just a moment. Bianca? All right, so uh, we are waiting to hear from... Uh uh, former uh, Arkansas governor and former presidential candidate Mike Huckabee. Of course, we are waiting for the big uh, announcement tonight, and you're going to be heading over to Mar-a-Lago, so I believe we'll have uh, Governor Huckabee with us in just a few minutes. We will talk to him about this, but, you know, th this is kind of the contrast. I believe there's a Republican Governors Association meeting or some kind of talks happening uh, sort, of, sort of simultaneously to this announcement tonight. Um, and, you know, we've seen so many of these Republican governors either have contentious relationships with Donald Trump or run very closely aligned mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. When you talk about, uh, or when a lot of Republicans talk about the unpopularity of Donald Trump, I mean, I think that's a very regional or a very specific geographic thing. Um, one of the specific examples that I was struck by is when you look at the ability of Lee Zeldin to get out Republican votes, he did not win his governor's race. Right, which but we was did, surprising, as close as it, he got it. He did have some coattails, though, and he's getting credit for, for driving out a lot of Republican voters and helping some of these Republican uh, members of Congress who won their races. Um, and, and so this is when and after you had Lee Zeldin fully embrace Donald Trump in a state like New York, and you know, you still saw him able to get out a lot of voters. All right, I believe we have Governor Mike Huckabee standing by for us, a man who knows a little bit of something about being a Republican governor. Governor Huckabee, great to see you. Great to always. have you in. Great to be with you guys. I wish we could uh, be celebrating better news about uh, the Republican elections, but I will say there's at least one race in America that I was pretty excited about. We can imagine uh, that you're very proud of your daughter. Sarah Sanders is uh, now the governor-elect of, of Arkansas, a position you held. And I wanted to talk to you about this because I think the role of a governor, it's, it's unique because, you know, you can't uh, pass the buck when it comes to a budgetary constraint. you got to balance the budget. And, and what type of wisdom have you handed off to your daughter, and what do you think she's stepping into as a governor of that state? You know, the state is in a pretty good shape financially, and uh, she's going to be enjoying walking into something much better than I did when I went in in uh, July of 1996, taking over for a governor that had to uh, leave because of convictions on felony charges. Um, and, you know, I hope she has a good financial base that she will continue to be able to do. But here's what I would say to her, and I have said to her, never forget that you are not uh, the boss of anybody, you are the servant of all. And sitting in that corner office with a nice view of the Arkansas River out of one window and Capitol Avenue or the other uh, means that every person in the state, whether they voted for you or not, they are your boss and treat them respectfully because you work for them. What a, you know, obviously a beautiful sentiment. I think that's what so many Americans mm. feel like when we elect people, we the people, they go to Washington, they forget about their constituents. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Donald Trump was a yeah. big outsider, ran companies, then came on and to obviously uh, become president. There's big announcement tonight, Governor Huckabee. Um, what are your thoughts on, you know, the momentum and the energy there that will be playing out, of course, to many people who have been waiting for this moment? Well, I love uh, President Trump. Uh, I'm inclined to support him, obviously. But quite honestly, it would have been better, I think, had he uh, said, I'm going to make a big announcement, but first I'm going to go to Georgia and make sure Herschel Walker wins that race, and I ask every Republican to go all in. I'm going to Georgia tomorrow to campaign for Herschel. Mm -hmm. So my attitude is I'm not getting into the 2024 race until we get the 2022 cycle behind us, and it's not behind us yet. So I, I hope that, uh, I think we all know what the president's going to say tonight. Uh, don't think any of us will be surprised if he announces that he's running. But then I hope he'll say, folks, now that the cat's out of the bag, let's go to Georgia. Let's make sure Herschel Walker is the next Georgia senator. You know, the, the last time President Trump did this, when he came down the escalator, it was in June. Uh, we're in November a at this point. It, it seems like this has been, es you know, uh, accelerated in, in terms of the timing of this. Uh, why do you think he's doing it now? Why do you think he feels the need to do it now? As you indicated, so many other people have told him, well, you, you should wait till after Georgia. What's the rush? Why do you think he is doing it right now? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. I do not know of one person, and I'm talking about even the people who are closest to him. I saw statements from Corey Lewandowski and other people who helped run his campaign before who said, let's hope he waits 
uh, but for reasons that maybe he'll share tonight, he's not. He, it's not that he needs to raise the money. He's already got almost $70 million in the bank. He's ready to go there. Uh, frankly, it immediately puts him in a position where he has to start doing accounting and legal uh, reporting that you don't have to do until you become an announced candidate. So he's invoking some of those restrictions and requirements that most of the time you're better holding off as late as possible. It's not like he's an unknown, not like he's got to get his foot in the door and let everybody know that he's in. Uh, because I think that everybody anticipates, whether he announces tonight or next June, that he's going to be in. Uh, it just seems that for every reason, I, I can't explain why he would choose right now before these elections are decided in Georgia. You know what it's like. You've been through the process before, all the paperwork, all the boxes you got to check and all the yeah. uh, everything you got to do to make sure you're doing this legit. Uh, and that's, that's the answer you get from most people when you ask that question. Why now? And we're also seeing, we put up that full screen earlier, Governor, of all the potential GOP contenders in 2024. There were a lot of faces up there outside of Ron DeSantis, as you know. Yeah, there could be 25 people that are all going to at least toss their name out there for consideration. Now, when it gets down to it, a lot of them won't run. They will not find that there's enough financial resources, or maybe they just decide it's not their best time. Uh, maybe President Trump convinces them that they shouldn't run, that he's going to win. A whole lot of things can happen. That's the point. There's a whole lot of time. And the way the race seems to look, do you remember back in the 2016 cycle? I oh, certainly yes. do. I was in it. Jeb Bush raised $150 million, and everybody said, wow, who can top that? Donald Trump did without any real big fundraising because he didn't need it. He had uh, his, his name, he had his celebrity status, and he rolled over all of us. So I, I truly believe that there's a sense in which we don't know how this field is going to look a year from now. And a year and a half from now, when people are actually voting, you know, when we get into 2024, New Hampshire, Iowa, South Carolina, things may be dramatically different. So uh, there, there's no reason to get too quick to uh, the starting line, because all it means is you're going to be burning money for lawyers and accountants and reporting to the Federal Election Commission for reasons I couldn't tell you. But you know what I'm excited about? Debates. You know, Republicans, oh, unlike Democrats, yeah. they actually, I think, enjoy the sport of debate. And that was one great thing about the 2016 GOP primary. I don't know if you agree with me or not, Governor Huckabee, yeah. but that's, you know, Republicans can get their idea out there on the table. They can compete for these votes. And it really is, I think, a fair and open competition. It may the best man or woman win. Right, Governor? Yeah, I mean, primaries, nobody likes them, but everybody benefits from them, even the candidates who are in them. Competition breeds uh, a better level of excellence. Mm -hmm. If a team never practices, it doesn't play the game very well in uh, SEC football on Saturday. And so practice and, and the whole idea of being competitive, it makes us sharper and better. So the idea that, uh, gee, I don't want anyone to run against me. Heck, I never wanted someone to run against me, but they always did. <laughs> and it made me a better candidate because I had to beat them in order to get to the big sure. show and beat a Democrat, which I still was able to do. Governor, I'd love to get your thoughts on all of this, you know, this uh, GOP infighting that we're seeing here. And some say it's playing right into the Democrats' uh, playbook there and, and what we're hearing and sort of the vitriol and old uh, you know, articles surfacing against Trump and them sort of, you know, potentially trying to drum up things that really aren't there. What's your take on what's happening? It's ridiculously stupid on the part of Republicans to commit fratricide. Uh, you know, we have an enemy, and it's that insidious uh, cancer that's growing against America that says we're an evil country, that leaves our borders open, that shuts down our energy resources and costs us double in energy cost and makes our groceries go up. We've got some real things to fight. It ain't each other. Yeah, but the fight will continue. I, I, I agree. I, you know, it's one thing to fight. It's another thing to have these debates and these open uh, and honest discussions about where the party should be headed. Uh, and sometimes that line yeah. can be can be very thin. But, Governor, we'll be watching it, and we look forward to our next conversation with you. Always great to see you, and congrats uh, to yes. your daughter. I think she'll do a great job, and I'm sure you're proud. Thank you so much, and, yes, I am proud. She's a great kid. She'll be a great <laughs> governor. Not a kid anymore. In, in, I know. I got to see. Yeah. You got to watch what you say now, of course. But I get it. I got a daughter, too. She'll always be. They'll always be yes. my babies. Great to see you, Governor Huckabee. Thanks so much. Thanks.
No crooked, crooked establishment. establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.